As we begin on this Tuesday morning, let me just welcome you once again. If you're watching and you don't know who I am, my name is Robbie Ridgway, and uh, I'm the pastor at Amelia Baptist Church, and we have been walking through the book of Colossians for the last few weeks, uh, Monday through Friday, right here at 11 o'clock on Instagram and on Facebook. Good morning, Vicki. Good morning, Steve. Uh, and starting yesterday, we started a, sort of a, the family section, I would say, the 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 way we act towards our family, the way we act towards our, our employers and employees, husbands, wives, children, parents. Uh, so uh, as you've joined us, we've, we've, last week we discussed husbands and wives. So if you missed that, uh, I think it's important. Remember, Paul calls wives to submit to their husbands and, and husbands to love their wives as Christ has loved the church. Uh, so if you missed that uh, yesterday, go back and check it out. It, it's still up on Facebook. You can find it on YouTube or on our webpage, AmeliaBaptistChurch.org, or on um, Instagram TV. So check that out. Today we're going to be looking at the relationship between children and parents on Colossians chapter 3. We're going to start in verse 20 today. So let me read these verses 20 and 21. Colossians 3, 20 and 21. Children, obey your parents in everything, for this pleases the Lord. Fathers, do not exasperate your children so that they won't become discouraged. Now, again, just as, as yesterday I said that Paul's instruction to wives would not have been overly uh, revolutionary or, or shocking to his listeners, they would have expected Paul to say for wives to submit to their husbands. Uh, and in the same way, Paul's instructions to children here, obey your parents in everything, is no surprise at all to, to anybody in Jewish, Roman, Greek, or any of the cultures that Paul is writing to, and especially to the group of Christians in Colossae, well, of course, children had to obey uh, their parents. Uh, in the original, some of your translations are going to say, children, obey your fathers. Uh, this is because in the first century, the father was the, the authority figure. The father was the one uh, who, who had, had the leadership and rule over the children. Uh, mothers, at least in most societies, had a much lesser uh, ultimate role. Uh, my Bible has chosen to translate fathers into parents because in today there, there, there is no difference as far as leadership in the home uh, over the children, I should say. Mothers and fathers both share authority over children. One thing that is distinct, if you remember yesterday we talked about wives are called to submit themselves uh, to, to their husbands. This was in the middle voice in the Greek, which, it, which tells us it's an action that somebody places upon themselves. This obey that Paul uses for children is in an active voice, meaning that it is not something that children are, are simply supposed to do on themselves. Parents are called, children are called to obey their parents, and in the same way, the implication in the Greek grammar is that if children do not obey, parents are called to take action to, uh, let's say, encourage them to obey, right? So this is not the same relationship as husband and wife. The parents have a distinct level of authority that is not present, a, a, a level of hierarchy that is not as pronounced in the husband and wife relationship. The wife chooses to submit to their husband. The child has no choice. They must obey according to what Paul instructs here. And this is where parents uh, will use different forms of discipline, and we're not going to discuss what's right or wrong here. Uh, obviously, we'll get into some extremes that Paul is going to address right here. Uh, but this, parents are called to do what is necessary to discipline, to encourage, to compel, to, to force, if they must, their children to obey parents. And, and children are to obey. What is different about Paul's instruction from the society around them is that he ends the verse by saying, For this pleases the Lord. So, for the Roman, Greek, uh, and even in many ways the Jewish society, there is this, there's more of a legal expectation that children obey their parents. Paul makes it explicitly Christian, explicitly uh, connected to our relationship to God. So children, you obey your parents to please God. This has implications if perhaps your parents are not Christian. Perhaps your parents do not know the Lord and, and uh, there is some tension in there. Uh, in the same way that Paul is going to call us in our, in our public life and in our work life and in society to, to obey authorities so that the gospel may shine, I think that the same implication is there for children. You obey your parents so that the gospel might shine 
through your life. This can shine to your parents who may not be Christian. This can shine to your friends around you who may not be Christian, who treat their parents with disrespect and, and lack of obedience. You obey to show that God is good and that God is gracious and that you seek to please the Lord above men. Uh, I'm just reminded, uh, you know, I share a lot about my children, but they take up a lot of my life. I'm reminded of one evening, uh, Samuel, I've shared with you how he gets, uh, sometimes gets upset and, and it takes a little while to process things. Uh, but one night he was very upset laying in bed and I came to him, I said, what's wrong? And he said, I need to tell you something. And I said, okay. And his, he told me, uh, I won't use names, but one of his friends at school was trying to tell him that he should obey him rather than obey me, his dad. And he was distraught. He didn't know how to respond. He didn't know what to do. And I told him, you obey me. You tell him, if he tells you, I'm going to obey my daddy. And we do that. We obey our parents to bring glory and honor to the Lord and to learn and to grow as God has called us to. Verse 21, fathers, do not exasperate your children so that they won't become discouraged. Now, he does use, we do use fathers here. And again, I, I believe that um, we could we can we can carry the instruction from fathers to both parents, right? This is this is an instruction that is not only fathers who carry out discipline, but perhaps this is extremely important because of uh, in in many cases maybe fathers take the uh, have the have the take a lead role in discipline, perhaps, or have perhaps have a tendency to go overboard or to respond in ways that are inappropriate in discipline. And again. Paul is not giving explicit instructions about whether you should spank or shouldn't spank, use timeout or no timeout, use grounding or, gro or no grounding, use taking away of privileges. He's not addressing the kind of discipline, but what he's saying is do not exasperate your children so that they won't become discouraged. He's saying don't take it to extremes. Don't berate your children. You see, we can, we can be tempted to say things, and, and I'm guilty of saying to my children at times and to other children uh, in church that I've ministered with, that I'm ashamed of what they've done. And this is, I think, an example of exasperation. We don't want our children to think we're ashamed of them. We don't want to discipline them in such a way that damages their psyche or damages them for the long term. We explain to them why what they've done wrong is wrong. And we, we do take discipline, maybe spanking, timeout, whatever you, you use in your home. But we don't discipline in such a way that demoralizes or discourages or uh, implies any kind of uh, lesser value to our children because we do not want to discourage them. You know as well as I do, discouragement is never the way to, to see change. If we, if we treat our children, if our children uh, are simply afraid of discipline, if they're simply afraid of, of being criticized or ridiculed, all they're going to do is seek to hide their sin and their, their disobedience in, in new ways, in greater ways. All that that's going to do is cause them to obey when they're in my presence if they're scared of me. I don't want to discipline. I don't want to parent. I don't want to teach my children to, to do what's right out of fear. I want to teach them that they do what's right because it pleases God, even beyond pleasing me. And I think this is a, a vital word for us today because it doesn't matter if you're spanking or using timeout or what you're using. If you go to the extreme of ridicule or harm or damage, you're simply showing your children to be more creative in hiding their sin. And that's not what God wants us to be. We need to display to our children loving discipline that corrects but doesn't shame our children, just as our Heavenly Father has done to us. God is not ashamed of you. And if your father, has, father or mother has made you feel ashamed, know that you have a Heavenly Father that's waiting to show perfect and correct discipline and love at the same time. Let's continue in our homes to do our best to, to seek the Lord, to follow the Lord. Wives, submit to your husbands. Husbands, love your wives. Children, obey your parents. And fathers, do not exasperate your children to the point of discouragement. And let's do all of this because of what Christ has done for us to the glory of his name and the advancement of his kingdom. Father, we come before you today. We thank you uh, for the roles you've called us to play, for the opportunities to serve in our homes and to our families. Father, I pray that you would bless us as we seek to be parents and children to your glory, that we would seek to obey as is fitting under you and to discipline as is fitting under your word, that you might be shown, that you might be cleared, and that we might walk more closely with you. 
We love you, Father, and we praise you in Jesus' name. Amen. Thank you for being with us this morning. I hope that this word has been encouraging. Join us tomorrow as we continue to walk forward uh, and continue to, to dig into what Paul is teaching us in the book of Colossians for our workplace, for our homes, and for our lives. I pray that you, again, would have a blessed day. Join us tomorrow at this time at 11 o'clock here on Facebook, on, on, on Instagram. Thanks, Matt. Thanks for the encouragement. It's good to see you. Good morning, Fred. Good to see you, too. Um, We'll be here. You can go back and check out some of the old devotions, uh, again, on Facebook, uh, on Instagram TV, on YouTube, and on our webpage. Have a blessed day.